Hi everyone, welcome. I'm Gabe Saldivar. This is my wife, Susan Saldivar. We pastor here at Life Church of Orange and we welcome you. We're glad that you could join us today. Yes. We're continuing on in our Growing in Christ study. Right now we're in the book of Matthew and we are focusing on the Beatitudes. Uh, specifically today, Matthew 5, 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, mm -hmm. for they shall be called the sons of God. You know, everyone wants peace. Everyone, everyone. Yeah. You know, you got to be out of your mind to not want peace. Most right. people, that's one of the things that they are looking for. They are just looking, how do I find peace in life? How do I find peace? There are even Christians who say these things that they just, it seems so elusive to them. Yeah. And But this is one thing that we must understand. This In Christ, peace is ours that we must see that we must it must be at the very one of the, the the core understandings of what we have in Christ Jesus yeah. is we have peace mm -hmm. and it's something that the apostles uh, would communicate they would they would tell, write in the letters to the churches the epistles grace mercy and peace because in this all things necessary for life and living are covered grace mercy and peace that that covers everything that we need everything that are we hope for everything that in life and living it's abundant life is is peace and so we need to see how important peace is we want it we desire it we need it and it is the very opposite of sorrows the very opposite of anxieties it's the yes. very opposite of fear mm -hmm. and so today we're going to be looking at peace yeah you know peace can look and seem so elusive right people are seeking peace constantly and um, it's like right outside of their grasp and uh, we live in a day where it seems that peacemaking is lacking obviously yeah, yeah. Um, in the news <laughs> there's been so much. a lot of you know sad things happening and um, protesting and um, it, the, a lack of peace definitely and if you won't only watch a little bit of the news you will quite quickly find that it is uh, that's to be true that um, we are lacking peace um, in our country yeah. and it's spreading all over the world it's it's a sad thing and people are seeking peace and they're not finding it yeah you know and speaking of that the opposite most people in the flesh uh, what we tend to do is when we cannot find peace and we cannot uh, find the the might be looking for justice but in that is ultimately looking for peace but when we do that we go to violence and violence is never an answer. Violence, is, right. especially as believers, there, there's never a solution in violence, mm -hmm. right? The Lord tells us, vengeance is mine, says the Lord, I will repay. So it's not right. for us to even do that. Jesus says in Matthew 26, 52, when he's talking to the disciples, even as he is being arrested, he's being taken uh, by the religious leaders, right? And what does Peter do? Peter pulls out a sword, right? right? And and uh, Jesus says to him that, uh, he says, if, if you, um, all who take the sword will die by the sword, is what he says to him. And that, that's a principle to understand that if we, we take the sword, in other words, if we're going to rely on the sword, if we're going to resort to violence, right? Those who do that, they die by violence. Mm. And, and it is something to be mindful of that violence is never a solution. So that's not necessarily our, our, our point of our message today, right. but it is something to make sure that we understand as believers. There's never uh, a time where you resort to violence. There, there, there is no, uh, there's no faith in God when we resort to violence. Mm. Even the apostles, when they're suffering for persecution, you never are going to read where they resorted to violence to, right. to get the solution answered. What they would do is they would resort to prayer and the kingdom of God would fall. The kingdom of God would, would, would uh, drop on the situation. The, the earth shook right. right when the church would pray and the prison doors that's would open. So awesome. And, but when we try and do things in the flesh, right. that's far from what happens. And so we should be encouraged in God and understand that there is a, there's a place that God desires us to be in fellowship with him and the power of the living God and trusting and in faith. Right. And so peace comes in this place, right? Real peace only comes to you and I mm -hmm. through the living God, through Christ Jesus. 
And so we must see that through our Father, by Christ, mm. by His Spirit. And the Word of God says to those who make peace, they are called sons of God. Mm. Right Now this is to those who make peace, not to breakers of peace. Mm. So we cannot be those that break peace, but we are those who are makers of peace because of the peace that is inside right. of you and I in Christ Jesus mm -hmm. by his spirit. We yeah. are peacemakers. So let that just let that thought just settle there. Peace is critical in any relationship and how we treat others, how we desire others to treat us. Mm -hmm. Let's take marriage for example. Susan and I were going on 28 years of marriage, right? But it's important that in marriage, that <clears throat> peace is necessary and desired as well. Right. And peace, peace, Susan's peace doesn't come because of me. Right. And, and my peace doesn't come because of Susan, right? But it comes because of the Lord. Peace comes because of the That's living right. God in us. And in that capacity, we're able to make peace and be at peace with each other, mm -hmm. right? Because I have my faults. I blow it. I mess, make mistakes. But in her I love <laughs> for me, there's going to be peace, right? As well as mercy, but there's also that peace because the peace comes not because of my doing, right. but because of what the Lord is doing in her. The same thing for me. Right. My peace Absolutely. comes because of what Jesus is doing in me, not because of regardless. And although my wife, she loves me and she um, mm -hmm. shows an abundance of love to me and overlooks my failings many, many, many times. And I have many failings and she overlooks those failings, but she loves me. And in that capacity, she extends peace to me. So we have that peace of what the living God is doing in us. Well, you know, it's so good to say all that because, you know, really the foundation has to be in Christ. Because I can't overlook his failings. He can't overlook my failings. And there can't be peace in our marriage unless the foundation is Jesus. Yes. And, and being in God's word and prayer. Like you said, the power of prayer um, is it's amazing. And, you know, being able to submit our lives to Christ first, then that's what brings the peace, yes. the love, the joy, all those things. And in that place of prayer, that, that fellowship, that koinonia with the Spirit, right? Yeah. That, that's where we, that strength of, of His peace comes yeah. when we pray, when we fellowship, when we worship the living God, lift right. up His name. The peace of God that right. passes all understanding, mm -hmm. right, is ours. That That's what we are called to live in, we're called to be a people who live in this peace. And that's right. why Jesus says, blessed are the peacemakers, right? Peacemakers. We, we as Christians, are yeah. the ones that have Do the capacity the <laughs> and the ability to make peace. Yeah. Because we're empowered by the Spirit to do That's this. Right. We we should not be the ones that are angry all the time. It shouldn't, Christians should not be, that should not be our, our, our you know, um, the fruit that emanates that, oh, you know, they're a Christian, but man, they're angry all the time. You know, I don't know what the That's deal sad. is. They, they tell us that they love Jesus, but they're always upset. You know, they're always, their temper just blows up. And it's like, man, what's the deal with that? Because we are called to be a people who make peace. Mm, that's good. So, you know, uh, God is the ultimate maker of peace. Right. And, and that's why we should see that we emulate him. We're empowered by the spirit. Yeah. But God is the ultimate maker of peace. Mm -hmm. As his children, sons of God is what the word says. It's a, a people that are surrendered and submitted to him. Mm -hmm. We also will emulate him in being a maker of peace. Yes. So you want to read here, uh, John one twelve talks about what makes us sons of God. That's right. Yes, it says this. But as many as received him to them, he gave the right to become children of God mm -hmm. to those who believe in his name. And Galatians 3.26 says, for you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Yeah, you know, this good. applies to not just males, but females as well. So <laughs> right. it's not like sons of God, you know, that we're, so the women are excluded because I'm not a son, I'm a daughter. But it says children. You know, it's children. We're his children. Once we believe and we trust in the Lord, we are his children. And um, this doesn't make mean that women are excluded from being right. peacemakers. <laughs> <laughs> it's not right. just the men, right? right? We have to be peacemakers as well. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, and, and that's like we, that's good. You read Galatians, you know, that, that we're all sons of God. And we have to understand what that what that means right. that there's more to the to just right here and now because there, there's going to be this life 
that comes, mm. right? When the Lord returns, right. and he is returning, church. We can't forget that. We can't get in this place of thinking, well, life just goes on, and it just as it always has. But the Word of God tells us, as believers, we want to be like the, the, the wise virgins who kept their, right. their, um, their lamps full of oil, right? How do you keep your lamp full of oil? A relationship with the Spirit of God, right? right. He is the oil. He yes. is the one that fills the oil. He's the one mm-hmm. that keeps our wicks you know, full, basically, right? It's the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of the Father working and doing in us. So, in, in examining how important this scripture is, this uh, Matthew 5, 9 passage, let us first consider who God is. Mm-hmm. Let us, let us uh, in relation to peace, who is God? Right. Who is God in relation to peace? He is the God of peace. You know, I was looking up the, in the Greek uh, the word for peace in the New Testament. And I, I just was so fascinated by this here. But it is the word Irene in Greek. That's where we get the name Irene, right? I love that. I, I have a cousin named Irene. That's blessed. And what that, That's in awesome. the Greek translation for us in English, it means prosperity. It means to be one, peace quietness and rest Mm. so god when we see that he's the god of peace in the new testament we're to understand that he's the god of a prosperity blessing Mm. right that to be at one that god is at one that god is the god that he's peace that god is quietness he's the god of rest how many people just struggle with getting rest yes right but he is the one that gives us rest so Mm. It corresponds also to the Hebrew word in the Old Testament, shalom, right? And that word shalom means wellness, to be well, right. to be happy, mm. right? To, to have health, also to have prosperity in the Old Testament. That word shalom, when, you, when people greet each other, they say shalom, yes. right? And that means that you would be well, that you would be at peace, that you would have prosperity, that you would have blessing, right. that you would have safety, mm-hmm. right? And it's it's that same word. This is what the apostles were correlating in the New Testament in Greek because they they wrote the New Testament in Greek because they're addressing, they're speaking to a Greek audience. Right. And that's why in the New Testament, it's Greek. The Old Testament, it's Hebrew. Mm-hmm. Right? So good. So, You know, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are never divided or at odds with each other. Amen. They always agree, perfect peace, perfect yes. fellowship. This is what we have entered into as sons of God, as children of God. Um, likewise, with his spirit in us, we should not be at odds with each other in Christ, but we should be peacemakers. Yes. Um, this is the work of the spirit in us. Thank you. Lord. Right? Yes. It's the work of the spirit in us that we are able to be peacemakers. It's not anything you can do on your own, obviously, because right. right. the world tries, <laughs> and we can see the result of that. Yes. Um, and in his peace, we do prosper in all areas that it may go well with us. In John 3, thir- I'm sorry, 3 John, verses, I'm sorry, chapter 1, verse 2 says... <laughs> Yeah, 3 John yeah. chapter 1, verse 2. Beloved, <laughs> I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Wow. Such a good scripture. Yeah, that's a wonderful scripture, right? Especially when we <clears throat> we need to understand that God is for your peace. Yeah. Right? The Lord is for, he wants you and I, he wants us to have peace. He came to make peace with us. Yes. And so the, the idea of understanding that that at the the center of it in in uh, the Lord wanting us to love him with all our heart mind soul and strength he also wants you and I to be a people at great peace mm-hmm. right and and I love how third John communicates that right that and the apostle John he's he's basically saying right I beloved I, I that that you would prosper in all things that you would be well, yeah. that that uh, everything would go well with you, that you would have good things in your life, that you would be blessed, that you would have peace, yeah. just as our soul is prospering. Because we know that in Christ, man, we've got everything, yeah. right? There's going to come a day where when the Lord returns and we're with him, we have everything. The riches in Christ are without end. Right. And so this is the work of the Lord. And so now in this life, when, as we're waiting and as we're uh, on mission and following the Lord Jesus Christ and we're staying on what he's told us to do until he returns, 
uh, following him, making disciples, uh, um, you know, uh, communicating the gospel message, all of these things, there's peace for us. Mm -hmm. and, he, and God wants us to have that. He desires that for us, and the Word of God just encour encourages us in that. Mm -hmm. So let's look at scriptures that reference the God of peace here, just to yeah. really bring it home to our hearts here today. Yeah, I'll read this. Romans 16, 20 says, And the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Hold that right, just that thought just for a moment. Look at that. That's Romans 16, 20. The God of peace brings peace to us, but what he does, he crushes Satan mm. under our feet, mm. right? His peace defends us. Yeah. His peace is protection. It's powerful. Right? His, his peace is, is protection for you and I that we don't need to fear. We don't need to be uh, looking at the onslaughts of the enemy and go, oh, man, it just looks so bad and what is going on. But really, what the Spirit of God is saying and what the Word of God tells us is that the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. Mm. Just, just a thought that I wanted to share. So good. Um, first, Thessal first Thessalonians 5.23 says, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. Amen. And I pray God your whole and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. He sanctifies his peace sanctifies us, his peace separates mm -hmm. us to him. Right? That we don't have to be concerned or or we, but we can be at peace yeah. that God is at work in your life. Amen. God's at work in our hearts. God is at work in making us more like him. Right. Right. As just as ob obeying him, just follow him, obey the Lord. Let the spirit of God do the work in us. Yeah. Right. But let him uh, continue to believe by faith. But it is the Lord. It is that peace confirms the sanctification, what he's doing in us uh, in our lives. Yeah. And Hebrews 13, um, verses 20 and 21 says this, Now may the God of peace, who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, mm. through the blood of the everlasting covenant, you, make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you oh, what is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Yes, and that goes along with it as well, right? Yes. The, the peace of God, we can rest in his peace knowing what uh, Hebrews says that that what Jesus has done for us, that the peace that He has brought yes. for us by the cross, that we can know and be confident that God is mm -hmm. making us complete in every good work to do His will. Yeah, that's so. That good. we are more than enough because of Christ to do His will. Mm -hmm. That you don't have to. Uh, feel like, man, am, am I enough for this? Am I complete in him? Uh, yes, we're complete in Christ. And we can rest in his peace because he's doing his work in us and he's doing what he says that he would do. And so we can uh, have peace that he is making us complete in every good work to do mm, as well. That's good. So understand this. He made the way in Christ for us to have peace by being reconciled to him. Our sins are forgiven so that we can have peace with God. Great verse here, 2 Corinthians 5, uh, 19 through 21 here, if you can read that. Yeah, it says that, that is that God was in Christ recon reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, mm, and thank you. has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Yes. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf to be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. Thank you. That we might become the righteousness of God in him. Woo! Amen. Yeah. Right? That's such a beautiful passage. Just praise God that, that that's the Lord. Understand how important God wants peace for you and mm -hmm. I and for us to understand peace mm -hmm. that we have it. We have peace and we can be makers of peace that jesus came he came to get us right. right he came to get us if you believe in christ jesus as your lord and savior that means that christ came to get you yes to reconcile you with the father so that we would have peace with god 
that we would no longer have to be under condemnation, that we would no longer have to have to worry that, man, when's the other shoe going to drop or anything like that? Mm -hmm. Christ took the wrath of God upon himself. Yes. In our place, the wrath that we should have suffered and endured, Christ took that mm. upon himself, and he came to make peace with you and I. Yes, he came so good. to bring peace, and he came to reconcile us to God. And so therefore, we're messengers now. We're ambassadors, mm -hmm. and we carry this peace in us by the Spirit of God, the temple of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, resides in us and we bring this message of peace yeah. we carry this message of peace and we communicate this as ambassadors of christ mm -hmm. peace with god in us through christ is how we bring peace and it is how we make peace mm -hmm. I, I hope that that is clear in what we're talking about today yeah you know as gabe was saying that you know talking about that scripture in second corinthians i was just thinking about the motivation of god sending his son was love mm -hmm. because it says in john three sixteen that god for god so loved yes thank you lord that motivation was love yes. he so loved the world that he sent his son for us and it's such a great example yeah yeah I love, love that. So good. So peace is in us by the power of the Holy Spirit, um, the fruit of the Spirit, right? It's love, joy, and peace. This fruit manifests in our speech, in our actions, in our yes. mindset. This is how we go about being peacemakers. It's only by the Holy Spirit and yes. the fruit that comes by being filled with His Spirit. Um, we can't have love, joy, and peace on our own, at least not lasting you know, you can try to muster it up on your own, but it, it doesn't last. It's not um, the same that comes from the right. Holy Spirit. You just wear out. Yeah. You just wear out. Yeah, exactly. If it's not God, right? The Lord's not doing it in us. We just will wear out. Right. Um, it is because we know how to receive peace with God. We communicate what is necessary to have real peace. Yes. So good. And again, um, going back to the, the understanding that we are ambassadors for Christ. What does the Bible tell us about our, our armor, right? Yeah. The Word of God says that not only do we have the, the breastplate of righteousness, belt of truth, right? That the helmet of salvation, and we know we have the shield of faith, we know we have the sword of the spirit, but it says that we are, are shod, yeah. right? With the preparation of the gospel of peace. Yes. The message of what Christ has done, bringing peace to man, peace, Yes. only comes through Christ. There is no other way. There is no other method right. to have real peace on earth, real peace in this life, real peace in your marriage, real peace in your relationships, real peace in your parenting, real peace in uh, everything that you go out to do without Christ Jesus yes. at the center, at the center of your life. Mm. Because he is peace in the midst of the storm. That's right. He is peace in the midst of turmoil. He is peace in the in uh, the in the valley of the shadow of death, right? That's right. But uh, and so it, it can only come with him if we go about trying to find peace in this life right. by any other means. It will fail. That's right. It may look like it's going to do something at first, but in the end, because it's if its source is not in Christ. And, and right. culturally, you know, socially, there's all these movements out there that are trying to ultimately find peace, but it's not going to happen without Christ Jesus being at the center. That's right. Without God's wisdom, the wisdom of God, the life of God, powered by the Holy Spirit that has Amen. been poured out on us as believers. So we must look to the things of the Lord. We must look to his word. We must be centered on Christ. Because this is what Jesus says, Blessed are the peacemakers, mm -hmm. for they shall be called the sons of God. It will yes. be evident in how we live. It will be evident in uh, how we move and have our being in mm -hmm. him. And we are the ones truly, As if you're a Christian, you're a believer, you are the one that truly brings peace yes. because of God in you, because of the Spirit of, of Christ in you bringing peace. You've been reconciled to God. You've been made at peace with God because of Christ Jesus. And so therefore you're able to carry that message of peace to others to bring real peace into the life 
of people around you, into the life of the, your neighbors, those that, are, that may be in your everyday life. Mm-hmm. You, as a Christian, as a child of God, sons of God, daughters of God, you have the message of peace. You are a maker of peace. And so we hope that that encourages you today yeah. as we look at God's word. And if you have any questions, uh, please feel free, free to write us, info at lifeoc.org. Uh, or you can go to the website there. We have a, a place where you can um, send in prayer requests and it gives you the email automatically. So you can go in there uh, as well. So that's lifeoc.org. And so we love you and we appreciate you. And God bless you. We're, um, we're back on Sunday mornings, 10, 15 a.m. We invite you to uh, come on out or yes. you can also see us online. We do a, a live simulcast on Facebook every Sunday at 10, 15. And then we also post all of our messages onto YouTube at our, our Life Church of Orange, California uh, YouTube page. So everything that we've been doing since uh, since March, mm-hmm. since the, um, uh, the order to originally close down. Yeah. Obviously, we've reopened, but um, we've been posting everything, and we're, we're our focus is to continue to right. have a online component uh, to the message. So we're making that available for folks to see uh, online. So. God bless you all. We just pray and believe God's blessings over yes. you. And we hope that this encourages you. And uh, we will look for you next time. We love you.